Hello and welcome back. I'm Eric Dieter, Spurs Program Coordinator. With me today is Dr. Mark Longacre. He is a professor in the Department of Rhetoric and Writing. He's also Associate Chair for the Department. One of his duties as Associate Chair is to train the assistant instructors who actually teach the Rhetoric 306 course, the one that you're currently engaged in, uh, working with the assistant instructors that are working with you. Today Mark is going to talk with us about audience, so I'm going to turn it over and let him do his thing. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for having me. Audience is a fairly easy concept to understand at an initial glance. The audience is, quite simply, the people who are likely to read whatever you write, the people who are likely to see whatever video or image you produce. When you really start to reflect about audience, this happens with quite a lot of things, you find that it's much more complex than it seems initially. And I'm just going to present one of these complexities to you. There are actually two audiences at play anytime someone tries to be persuasive. There's the intended audience and the actual audience. Now the intended audience are the people who are supposed to read. These are the folks that you have in mind when you sit down to write an article. Let's imagine, for example, that you want to persuade people in a particular community in Austin that the DREAM Act is good for them. You might tell them that the DREAM Act would help a number of illegal immigrant students attending public schools in their community go on to college, get good jobs, move back to the community, earn money, contribute to the tax base, and improve the schools. And that would be persuasive to the people living in that community. But you might find that another group reads the article, the actual audience. These are the people who do read. The article might not just be read by the people living in a community with a large population of illegal immigrant students. It might also be read by people who live in other areas of Austin. Maybe they live in Brentwood or Crestview or Breaker Woods. And they say, well, that's good for those people in that community, and I want to help everybody in Austin, but it's not going to directly benefit me. So I'm not going to be as persuaded. And this is one of the major lessons we get out of thinking about intended versus actual audience. When the intended audience looks like, is more or less the same as or equal to the actual audience, the argument is persuasive. However, when the intended audience does not look like the actual audience, it's not persuasive. And this works in degrees. The intended audience looks more like the actual audience, then it'll be more persuasive, less like the actual audience, less persuasive. Now you as a writer can get quite a lot out of this. When you sit down to write, you really should think about your intended audience. And by the way, anybody who ever says they're writing to a general audience is not telling the truth. There's no such thing as a general audience. Not intended, not actual. When people say they're writing to, an intent, to a general audience, what they usually mean is that they're writing to people like them. And they're very specific people. So you should reflect, about, reflect upon the exact people that you want to persuade. You should also think about whether or not the people who are likely to read your argument will look like your intended audience. Now, what does this mean for you as someone who's interested in rhetorical analysis? Well, when you're looking at a text and you're trying to figure out who the intended audience is, you should ask yourself, what does the text say? Look at the article or the visual and try to understand what the argument is. And then ask yourself, who is likely to find this argument persuasive? I'll give you an example. Here we have an image that I found. It basically lists all the accomplishments that this young man has had, followed by an argument that you should support the DREAM Act. It says he's been part of an honors collegium, he's done well in school, he's, he's been on a government, a student government, employee of the month, he's done all these wonderful things. And he's done all these wonderful things because he wants success, and success comes with legal citizenship. Now, if you're somebody who believes that what a person does in this country matters more than how that person gets to this country, then you're likely to find this persuasive. This is to say, basically, that the intended audience for this argument includes people who believe that a person's actions in this country matter more than how that person got to this country. And those people will find it persuasive. Now, if you're not that kind of person, if you're somebody who believes that how a person got into the country matters more than what that person does in the country, then you're likely not to find this per persuasive, because you're likely to say, well, it's great that he was in the honors program, it's great that he was part of student government, and it's great that he completed these projects, but he still got here illegally, and that matters more. So we figured out some idea of who the intended audience is, but we still haven't figured out who the actual audience is. You figure out the actual audience, oh, went backwards, by asking yourself, where did the text appear? And who is likely to read it? 
You look at the context. Now, I found this on a blog. It's called Down with Tyranny. Largely addresses people with liberal or progressive uh, politics. Now, since I know that people with liberal or progressive politics care more about what someone does while in this country than they do about how that person got to this country, then I can say with some degree of certainty that the actual audience matches the intended audience. And when this thing appears on this blog, it's likely to be persuasive. So as an analyst, I'm able to make a judgment. I'm able to say, well, this is probably going to work because it showed up on a blog that's directed at political liberals who are likely to believe this thing and therefore be persuaded by the argument. If it appeared somewhere else, if it showed up on Human Events Online, which is a conservative blog, it likely would not be convincing. So that's basically it. Intended an actual audience. The distance between the two can help you to figure out whether or not your work will be persuasive, can help you to figure out whether or not somebody else's work will be persuasive. But I want to end this with one more brief reflection about intended and actual audience. When I put this presentation together, I had an intended audience in mind. I was thinking about, particularly, students and teachers who are interested in rhetorical analysis and persuasive writing, and I had this in mind because I know something about the curriculum you're going through, and I know something about the teachers whom you've met. But I don't know everything about you, which is to say, I don't know the actual audience. And maybe the actual audience is a little bit different from the intended audience. Maybe you drifted off during the presentation. Maybe you lost interest and started thinking about something else. I can't predict all those things. I can't predict whether or not you had a bad day today. I can't predict whether or not you really care about rhetorical analysis and persuasive writing. And as a result, the actual audience is always a bit of a mystery. This differentiation, the difference between intended and actual audience, helps us to understand that persuasion is always kind of a guessing game. No matter how much you learn about your actual audience, you're never going to get it exactly right. But you're never going to get it exactly wrong either. Sometimes you have an intended audience in mind, and an actual audience finds it, and they have a reaction that you don't expect. And that's part of what makes persuasion interesting, fun, and frustrating. Well, thanks for your time, thanks for listening, and good luck with your classes.